start welcome back guys now in this video let's discuss about conducting zone in the previous video we have discussed what exactly is conducting zone and what is respiratory zone now conducting zone is lined by lined by or the lining epithelium is pseudo stratified ciliated columnar epithelium okay now important point is the cilia whatever are there they are helping in clearance of mucus okay so from the respiratory tract because of the mucociliary excretory mechanism the cilia are all the times weeping away the mucus or the sputum now in the conducting zone there are two important cells which are acting as stem cells okay stem cells stem cells in conducting zone two cells are there first cell is called as basal cell and the second cell is called as clara cell so basal cell and clara cell are the stem cells in the conducting zone see in the respiratory tract there is one more cell which is acting as a stem cell but it's not a part of conducting zone but rather it's a part of respiratory zone what is that cell it's a type 2 pneumocytes okay type 2 pneumocytes they are present in respiratory zone not in conducting zone it's a important point now after discussing this let's talk about the ciliary disorders okay just a link which you should know a patho link there are two important ciliary disorders which you need to know in the respiratory tract the first disorder is called as cystic fibrosis and second is the carta Jenner's syndrome okay so two important disorders are seen in the conducting zone now first let's discuss about carta Jenner's syndrome what exactly is this carta Jenner's syndrome what is the problem here guys you all have studied from your class 11th and 12th the cross section of cilia and flagella see in the cross section of cilia and flagella there are these central filaments and peripheral filaments okay now these filaments are there now they are nothing but the microtubules okay so 9 plus 2 configuration you have already studied this guys see the filaments here are connected with the protein if you properly see here this blue color proteins whatever I am highlighting now these are the proteins which are called as the dynein arms so the dynein arms are the connecting proteins which are helping in the movement of the cilia as well as flagella now whenever there is a defect in the dynein arm that will cause cartagenous syndrome okay now see here what is the problem in cartagenous syndrome the problem is defect in dynein arms okay defect is there in the dynein arms so that what will happen cilia or flagella cannot beat okay now there is problem in the moment of cilia or flagella now why this is important here in the respiratory system is because i have taught you in the conducting zone the lining epithelium is ciliated columnar epithelium pseudo stratified ciliated columnar epithelium normally cilia with the help of its movement is clearing the mucus or sputum 
Now, if a person, imagine, if I am the person who is having Cartagena syndrome, then there is a defect in dynein arm in my, in my cilia, so that my cilia are not beating. If my cilia are not beating, can mucus be cleared from my respiratory tract? It's not going to happen. So, mucus plugging will happen. So, whenever cilia and flagella, whenever the, they are not properly beating, that will cause mucus plugging. Okay, mucus plugging will happen. Now, this mucus plugging will cause infection. Okay, now that mucus plug is acting as an obstruction. So, distal to the obstruction, we all know definitely infections will happen. So, Cartagena syndrome is a condition where there is defective in dynein arms leading to impairment of mucociliary excretory phenomena that will cause a mucus plugging that will lead to infections in the respiratory tract. Which type of infection? The patient now will have bronchiectasis. Okay, so this is a respiratory pathology. Bronchiectasis will happen. Apart from bronchiectasis, now these cartagenar patients will also suffer with other conditions like sinusitis. Okay, why same reason? Inflammation in the sinuses, even your sinuses are lined by ciliated epithelium. Now, the mucus plugging is happening even in the sinuses that is causing the infection and inflammation, sinusitis. These patients will also have situs inverters. Okay, situs inverters. What exactly is this situs inverters? See, during development of the baby embryologically, heart was more towards right side because of the ciliary movements which are happening in the embryological states, the heart was moved towards left. Even that was the same with the liver also. Even the liver was placed mostly in the axial, axial part of the body and the center of the body but because of the ciliary movements, the liver was pushed towards the right side. But the problem here is ciliary movement or the ciliary beating. Now in this baby, because the cilia are not properly beating, the heart now is going to be positioned in the right side and even the liver will be positioned in the center. So this is called as situs inverters. Situs inverters means the argon position in the opposite side. The heart which was supposed to be in the left side, right now it is in right side. Okay, so that is situs inverters. So this is the triad. Okay, so the Cartagena syndrome, the patient is going to have a triad of symptoms which includes bronchiectasis, situs inverters and sinusitis. Now, after this, let us discuss about the second pathology that is cystic fibrosis. What is the problem with the cystic fibrosis? First of all, cystic fibrosis is autosomal recessive disorder. This is a very important question. The second important point is what is the gene mutation? Why the cystic fibrosis is happening? Cystic fibrosis is because of CFTR gene mutation. Okay, very important MCQ. CFTR gene is mutated. Okay, now what is the pathology? What is the pathogenesis in cystic fibrosis? See, I am showing you here the respiratory tract. Imagine this is the bronchus. Take it as a bronchus. We all know this bronchus is lined by cells. Okay. Now here are the cilia. Now I am just showing you one cell. Okay. Now let me show you one cell guys, see this is the cell membrane and this is one such cell with the cilia on the top of it. I am just showing you two cilia. Now important point is, see on the surface of the cells, there are certain channels called as chloride channels. Okay, These chloride channels are seen in a person who is having normal CFTR gene function. If the CFTR gene is normal, then this, these channels are also normally functioning. What these channels are doing? Normally, they will 
send the chloride ions out. Okay, they will throw the chloride ions out of the cell. This is which happens normally. But in a patient who is having cystic fibrosis, what will happen? See, let's take the same cell. Let's take these channels, guys. Now, these channels, they are mutated channels because of the CFTR gene mutation. Whenever the channels are mutated, now they are no longer going to send the chloride out. See, chlorine is not going out. Okay, chlorine is getting accumulated inside the cell. Now, chlorine accumulation is happening. So, negative charges are getting accumulated into the cell. Now, this is something not good. So, in order to maintain the electron neutrality, what this cell will do is, it will open. Now, this cell is going to open new channels here. These channels are the sodium channels. See, they are actually there from the beginning. But now, these channels are getting opened and these channels are going to bring the sodium inside to neutralize that extra negativity. So, sodium is coming into the cell. Now, problem is, whenever the sodium is coming into the cell, it is going to bring the water along with the sodium. Actually, you all know, see, here, if I show you, here, normally who is there? Here, usually mucus will be there, okay? Usually, here, mucus is going to be present in the respiratory tract. Now, when the sodium is coming into the cell, all the water is going to follow the sodium. Now, along with sodium, see, water is also coming into the cell. Now, whenever water comes along with the sodium, what will happen to the mucus? Just tell me. Now, mucus is going to be heavily, heavily get concentrated. Mucus is getting so much concentrated. Now, can such a mucus be cleared by uh, with the cilia? Now, cilia are not able to clear the mucus right? because the mucus is getting more concentrated, more thickened, like a very thick syrup. Why? Right? Because water is following the sodium. Sodium is coming into the cell. Water will follow the sodium. The mucus will become thick plug. Okay, mucus plugging will happen now. Okay. Now, can such a thick mucus plug, can, be, can it be easily cleared because of the cilia? No. Cilia, now, even though there is no anatomical deformity, when, even though there is no deformity in the cilia, but this, this cilia cannot clear the mucus away because the mucus is so much thicker. Okay. So, we can say, cystic fibrosis is a condition where there is thick secretions. Okay. Because of the defective chloride channels. Okay. Defective chloride channels. So, what happens because of the defective chloride channels? Sodium will enters into the cell. When sodium enters, water also enters into the cell. Okay. Okay. Now, what will happen? Now, mucus plugging is going to happen. In the bronchus, this mucus is getting plugged. Now, that will cause infections. Because of this, in cystic fibrosis, the patient is going to have respiratory tract infections. Okay. This is the problem. Now, how to treat this condition? Now, you have to treat this condition by opening the chloride channels. How you can do that? The treatment is done with a drug which opens the chloride channels. The name of the drug is called as IVA Caftor. This is the pharmacological link. So, IVA Caftor is a drug 
Evacaptor is a drug which will open the chloride channels and helps in treating this condition of cystic fibrosis. Okay guys, in this video we have discussed important points regarding the conducting zone as well as the two important ciliary disorders. Now in the next video, let's start with the respiratory zone.